Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, yeah, we are here with Granson in the um, tank roll quest, where we continue and hopefully can get to it. Hey, there's Sinner. I broke the bad news to the widow of its scavenger while you were away. She took it about as well as you'd expect. After she tried to serve horse, I started asking her about the choker and where her husband has got it. I hope you were sensitive about that. Seems he and his mate took a trip to Il Mac a year or so back, hoping to cart off all the verbatim treasures they could carry on an untouched ruin uh, they'd learned about. Of course, in their greed, they neglected to account for the fey folk who killed and drove mad most of them. Those who survived didn't come away empty-handed, though. In fact, they stumbled upon a remarkable find. Three sacred treasures of a royal family. They escaped with two, the thing of Orthos being one of them, which was sold by another scavenger to, Yen to a Yumoran. Either that merchant you met at the Beehive, or an agent of his, I'd wager. So the merchant gives it over to Melinda for restoration, after which Dikaiosin attacks White, presumably because he's after it as well. Meanwhile, the scavenger here in Mortsu keeps the choker, the eyes of Orphus, locked away for safekeeping, and when he finally decides to sell it, the sinless bastard shows up again. Which brings us to the here and now. Damned if I know why, but at this point there's no denying that Dikaios since been hunting the royal relics. And so, assuming he hasn't already claimed the third one, the claws of office, then I say we should get our hands on it first and then use it to lure him out of hiding. But to that end, we'll have to venture into the fairy kingdom ourselves. Those scavengers didn't receive the warmest welcome, and we're not like to be treated any better. I've traveled to Ilmec before. How have you now? And the little devil's let you go. I can only assume you have taken a liking to you. But settle it then. We head to Ilmec and ask after this verbatide ring. What a remarkably uneventful trip. I kept jumping at shadows, waiting for eaters or foul demons or worse to attack. Though that might have been preferable to a fey, frankly. Still, we're going to have to deal with them eventually if we're going to find this ring. After all, the Numu were part of Verbatite society, and without their help, I'm not sure where to even begin our search. Perhaps there's a village of some sort you can guide us to? Well, there's plenty. Pliny, yeah? Very well, lead on, Sinner. Something about your demeanor bespeaks a question unasked. Have I the right of it? A ring that belonged to the royal family of Robert, and it's called the Claws of Authors. Hmm. But Robert is long gone, as are the caretakers of a ring you seek. Who can say where it might have got to? Oh, hello there. You have a question for me? The Claws of Office. It is a ring, you say. The name I have heard before, but I know nothing to say for that. Oh, uh, Sul Ul served the royal family before the flood. Somewhat temperamental they are, but surely they will have the knowledge of this treasure you seek. Just have a conversation or three, learn anything interesting. So the Sol Ul is the one we ought to speak with, huh? 
former servant of a royal family, which would mean they've lived well over a century. Bagami. We found our Numu. Of late, you've proven yourself to be a skilled conversationalist. So why don't you explain the situation? I do not know you, yet you seem to know me. Echo. The fifth was discovered yesterday. A young girl, not yet of age, transformed into a misshapen beast like the others before her. As if we needed more proof of a pattern. At this rate, any citizen could be next. Tell me, you at least learned something of this from this one. I studied the remains myself. It was plain a powerful magic had been employed. Vestiges of the enchantment lingered long after. The culprit, I think, is not a man to be trifled with. That is all I can say for now, but you may be rest assured that I will ascertain their identity ere long. On my honor as court mage, I swear it. Until I do, however, I would implore you and your fellow knights to dispatch any who turn or show signs without hesitation. But these are our kith and kin. Should we not try to keep them alive until a way to reverse the transformation can be found? Your mercy will place countless others at risk. As a knight of Verbert, did you not vow to serve all her people? Justice for the weakest among us? Was it not? How many such innocents will die before you do what must needs be done? It pains me deeply, Brandon, but the safety of a royal family is paramount. I fear that to take anything less than the most drastic measures would be to invite death into the castle. Death is already here, surely you must see that. I will not let it be whispered that Princess Soldia turned a blind eye to her people's suffering. These crimes are a tragedy based upon every verbatite soul. Mine most of all. And that is why I will take charge of the investigation myself. Say, is it an accident that the princess looks so similar to Serenium? It could be, but I cannot know for certain. My lady, be reasonable. You cannot put yourself in harm's way. You have a responsibility to their subjects. Yeah, it's probably accidental. So I'm to gamble with their lives instead? Let them shield me while I al alone take shelter and look down on them from on high? Yes, exactly. You're the princess. You're Brandon, yes? The new recruit? A rather promising one from what the captain has told me. You will attend me personally. M my lady? You heard me. I will not stand idly by when I have a power to make a difference. Together we will see justice done for all, as your vow and your princess demand. Lady Soldier, I, I understand. Forgive my hesitation. My life and my sword are yours to command. I have great expectations of you. I trust you will not disappoint me. Right. There's no telling when our culprit will strike again, so we must begin our investigation at once. There are witnesses to be questioned, clues to be gathered. Come, come. N now? Lady Soldier! Lady Soldier! Ever the stubborn child. I wish you the best of luck, Brenton. You will need it and more. Hey, are you alright? 
the way you were holding your head, as if wrecked by terrible pain. What happened to you just now? A vision of a past. Lady Soldier, you saw her with your mind's eye? When, when it is as suspected, you have a gift too. You are like Brandon. What do you mean she's like Brandon? Why have you come to me? What is it that you seek? I see. And for this hunt of yours, you have come to Emek in search of a clause of office. Hmm, I'm afraid this is no simple matter. First, I would know that you are capable of facing the eater you seek. There's a spot in a river not far from here in which I used to bathe, until a number of beasts grew equally fond of it. If you are the warrior you claim to be, they should pose no challenge whatsoever. As for you, I have questions. See to the beasts. Sul Ul and I will have a few things to discuss. Dark mutants. Oh, more. Those are yours, right? Basilian? The beasts are no more than? Good, good. I hadn't the heart to do it myself. For they were no ordinary beasts, but old friends who had survived the flood. A victim of a curse you would heard us speak of in your vision. So this curse transforms people into monsters, like how sin eaters can spawn more of their own kind? I will speak no more of this or other matters until after you have completed the task I set before you. This is not negotiable, Granson. So when you accepted my terms, and so must you. It's so secretive with both of you. Can't we all just speak plainly? Your comrade refuses to acknowledge the situation. This may take time, so I am patient. Indeed, I have dealt with many a stuck-on child in my life. <laughs> yeah. They made me go and gather a bunch of strange mushrooms, so hopefully we can finally get some answers. Exemplary timing, Serenia. It was not more than a moment ago that Granson returned, having at last obliged my humble request. Humble request, my ass. This one's no better than a new moron aristocrat, so ac accustomed to making others do their bidding. I'll tell you there's something off-putting or taking orders from a dog. Ere you continue and give me cause to reconsider aiding your hunt, perhaps you should ask your questions. Fine. Serenia said she saw a vision of you and Brenton looking thick as thieves. You are friends, eh? Know what he's up to now? Brenton is dead. He died a century ago, together with his comrades in an attempt to halt the flood that they themselves set in motion. I presume you speak of the eater that put, took possession of his corpse? Dikaiosin, I. But unlike most eaters, he's been doing more than roam about aimlessly. For some reason, he's been hunting down royal treasures of old Burbert. And he's been killing anyone who got in his way. You see now, huh? What irony. Even in death, he remains a slave to duty. A knight brave and true. He's a murderer, and I'm not here to say otherwise. He wound my life, killed my beloved right in front of my very eyes. Every night I go to bed, dreaming of a day I'll take my revenge. Oh, I see. Truly, you have suffered a terrible loss. But by your first revenge, it is quite natural and understandable. It is ultimately misguided. Unusual behavior notwithstanding, Tikaiosin is nevertheless no more than an eater. To hate him is to hate the sea that claims the ship, the disease that steals the child, the tremor that topples the home. 
the mindless force of nature that begets destruction, driven by fragmented memory. Don't you dare make excuses for him. You think I wanted any of this? I grew up on a farm. I could barely wield the sword. Now I've got to kill one of the bloody cardinal virtues. Hate and anger and vengeance are all I got now. My every waking moment is dedicated to plotting his death. It has to be. It has to be. So just tell us where the goddamn drink is and we'll be on our way. This is how it has to be, hmm? Who you have to be? Nay, hey, I think not. You ask too much. Demand far, far too much. And in exchange for what? This I cannot abide. Are you trying to barter with me? You little shite, tell me what I want to know or I'll beat it out of you. Back off, Sylvania. I won't let anyone or anything stand between me or and Melinda's murderer. Friend, Moses, dear friend. To know that an eater disgraces his flesh and his memory pains me more than I can well express. It would bring me great comfort if you were to grant him peace. I should like to share with you a story. If you would be so kind as to join me in Lear Gear. This had better have a point. Why are we here again? It is beautiful even now, a palace of forgotten dreams. But before it was Liergia, in the time of Herbert, it was grünes Licht. The memory of mine in which you walked was a troubled time, where the people of our kingdom were preyed upon by an ambitious fool. Brenton, then a young knight who had only just won his spurs, had caught the eye of Princess Soldia, who chose him as her personal guardian. However, he was far too inexperienced and was unable to keep her safe when she ventured outside these walls on one of her investigations. For his failure, he was stripped of his knighthood, and shortly thereafter, he quit Verbert. I thought I would never see him again. But then one day he returned, one of several wandering adventurers led by a man named Artbert, who had accepted our invitation to look into the mysterious transformations which had continued unabated in Brandon's absence. Lady Soldier was overjoyed, and for a time it was like nothing had changed. They spoke often and grew even closer. And then came the day when we learned the truth. When we learned that the architect of our kingdom's suffering was none other than the court mage Tedric. It's him, Brandon. I'm sorry. So am I. Come, let's have done with it. It was you, Tadric. Do not deny it. Tormenting our people, twisting and transforming them into monsters, and for what? 
Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. And after I took such pains to be rid of you, you may strip me of my titles, but not my oaths. I shall serve Lady Soldier till my dying breath. As you like. Once I've killed you and your friends, there will be no one left to stop me from claiming my throne. Hear me, my children, the hour of reckoning is at hand. Rejoice, for a noble sacrifice shall you find everlasting glory. Lord Tadwick, it, it hurts. Soon you shall know no more pain. I was going to make it quick for all time's sake, but now, now I think I ought to take my time. Okay. Do I play as Brandon now, or...? Come, my children, render your lives for your masters. For all your crimes and more, you will pay. The direct approach isn't working. Your feeble tricks are no match for my magic. He's drawing upon the eve of his thralls. Kill them! Poor bastards, that's what I get for trusting a court mage. Brandon, bring them all in close. Black mage is limit breaking. Such a display of strength, the stuff of legends. There's no escape, Tadwick. Surrender. Well, I still have so many lives at my disposal, I think not. Come, children, in death your meaningless lives gain glorious purpose. Burn bright for me and die, die, die! How many more must die for your vanity? Interrupt the casting you. You're most tenacious, but everyone has their limits. That attack's too much for any one person to take. We have to stand together, understood? No sacrifice is too great to claim what's mine by rights. Tadric! Sure, no one can harness such a massive torrent of ether. Such obedient children to offer up their lives in sacrifice. What's the life but a medium for my magics? How much longer can you hold for line, I wonder? A 
bastard's keen to drag this out. We can't keep this up forever. Everyone, now is our chance to turn the tide. I still got a few arrows in my quiver. Go ahead and bring them all into the center like before. See that, Frederick? You're next. Time to thin the herd, starting with a dwarf, perhaps. Don't you touch her, you bastard! Then we, ha then we have to defend Lamet at all costs. you both I tire of these fair tricks let us end this fast here and now this castle will be your tomb Going for something big and we are on a timer. Don't ask for mercy, Tadric, you won't get it. Some wretch. This kingdom is mine by rights. Quentin, what's the meaning of this? Tadric, you. But why, after serving us faithfully for so many years? I'm no servant. No servant. Not of your mother or your father. Or you. My lady! God damn you! Lady Soldier, speak to me. Quentin, my dear brave Quentin, am I your princess still? Would you honor your vows even now? Now and ever after, my lady, my sword is yours to command.
that as well. Would that I had the strength to wield it myself. Steal your heart with Brandon, and for the good of Robert and her people. No, 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 I, I cannot. I will not. Honor your vows to your kingdom, to your princess. To your friend, who never doubted you, who knew that you would return and see justice, justice. No, it should be me. my sword now and ever after We rounded up the rest of Fedric's co-conspirators and tossed them in the jail. In the jail, the ones who haven't been corrupted by his magic, so it is. not hesitate again, no matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice. Well, you saw what happened? Wicked White, she backed him to do it? Like Melinda. Come, let us quit this place and return to Plan Annie. Do you know why I entered into the royal family service many long years ago? Because when I was attacked by a wild beast which nearly tore me to shreds, it was Lady Soldier who came to my rescue. She saved me, but it's a debt that can never be repaid, 
for there is not this world which holds greater value than life itself. Not even her death absorbs me of it, and so I must always first consider her wishes, her desires, what she would want from me and her kingdom, for Branton, and yes, even for you, Granson. For me? To define oneself in opposition to the other, an other bereft of complexity of nuance, wholly devoid of redeeming qualities, a villain? Indeed, there is comfort and certainty in hatred. But it's a false and fleeting comfort, bought with lies we tell ourselves about who we are, what we must be, what we must do. And never you mind the cost, if anything, the more we offer up and sacrifice the better. Do you not see? Brandon was right to hesitate, to doubt. The unwavering blade cares not whom it serves, nor who it cuts. I, I think I need a moment. Perhaps you do as well. Leave us for now, Serenia. a while but let's get into the episode here and finish this next time until then amaze and don't get lost <laughs>